Samsung is always good at packing a ton of extra features into its premium smartphones, and I'm gonna highlight some of the features you don't wanna miss when you're setting yours up, especially the Galaxy S20 series, next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Hello, welcome back to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. This right here is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, the most premium version of Samsung's latest flagship series. It's large, it's slick, and it's packed with special features because, well, that's the Samsung way. So I thought I'd highlight a few of my favorite tips and tricks when setting up one of the Galaxy S20 devices. If you pick one of these up, you're gonna wanna know about these. So let's dive in. All right, so first things first, looking on the side here, you've got this, the power button. By default, it's actually not a power button, if you can believe it. It's a Bixby button. I know, that's pretty confusing. No power button. Instead, it's a button to control Bixby, which, I mean, to be frank, I don't want to control Bixby with it. I'd rather turn off my phone. So I'm going to show you how to change that. If you drag down the notification shade here, let's see here. There we go. Drag that down, and you see that power button up there? They're trying to get you in the habit of using that instead. We'll go ahead and tap that down at the bottom, side key settings. And what you get here is this menu. Now, when you get this uh, S20 Ultra out of the box, and this goes for the other S20s as well, the press and hold area will have Wake Bixby as the preset. That's the default. So I go in here and set that to power menu uh, immediately, power off menu, and that way I get this when I hit the power button, the way it's supposed to be, my opinion, of course. Now, also, while you're there, let's go ahead and jump in there. Again, side key settings. You have this section up here. On my Pixel 4 XL and most premium smartphones that I've used, I've gotten really used to double tapping the power button in order to summon the camera. I just find it's a great way to pull up the camera quickly. Maybe I'm in a moment and I want that camera launched and I don't wanna to have to tap the app icon on the home screen. This is a great way to do it. Well, in the side key area, you also have the option of assigning a function to the double press. Where, whether you want the double press to be a launch uh, option or not, it's there, so you could deactivate it if you want. I have it quick launch the camera, but really you can use this to summon Bixby if you're a Bixby fan and you wanna do that, or really open any app on your device. Very customizable and nice to know that they are there. So as for the navigation buttons, you'll see I've got a gesture thing going on right now, uh, the kind of standard Android 10 gesture scheme. But out of the box, this is actually very different. Let's go to settings. And then we're going to go to display. Let's see here, where are we? There we are. Display, navigation, uh, bar. Okay, so this is how you get to the settings for the navigation bar. Out of the box, it's set like this. This is what you get out of the box with the navigation buttons at the bottom. Also, the button's reversed. I don't know why Samsung really loves to put the back button on the right side. Every other phone that I use, it's on the left side. So if you want to stick with the navigation buttons, come here and you can do the button order. Swap that around so that things are a little bit better. At least in my eyes, I feel like it's better. But maybe, actually, you want to just turn on gestures. We'll go into full screen gestures and do more options because there are a couple of different ways to do gestures. Uh, Samsung's methodology kind of integrates the button approach, but with swipe zones for each of those buttons. Personally, I don't really care for that very much. I, fig I figure if you're all in on gestures, you might just go all in uh, instead of like this halfway point. So I opt for the bottom one, which as I said, this is the gesture functionality that you get as stock in Android 10 devices. So it's like swipe up and hold to get your, your uh, multitasking. I'll swipe that away. Any uh, Left or right side when you're in an app will take you back. There you go, you see it takes you back. Um, and then when, let's see here, we'll go into here and swipe left, swipe right, that kind of swaps between the different apps. That's a, that's a gesture navigation scheme that works for me, but it's up to you. Now you know you have those options. Now we've got the volume rocker on the side. We might as well configure that too. Out of the box, 
this has a uh, different functionality than what you might want. You have to ask yourself, do you make a lot of calls or do you listen to a lot of media? That's going to tell you what you set here. So let's go ahead and take a look. If I tap the volume rocker, it gives me my little menu up here. I'm going to pull that down. And you have this switch here. Out of the box, this is off. Use volume keys for media. Basically, essentially, when it's off, that means that this, the volume rocker is going to adjust the ringer volume. But maybe you don't make a lot of calls, and that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, which is the case for me. So I'm going to hold, pull down that menu, select use volume keys for media, and now when I make any changes on my volume rocker, no matter what app happens to be in focus, it's changing the music or the video audio playback. Uh, that's what it's actually uh, choosing to select at that point. I just find that to be way more useful uh, than the ringer volume that I just don't really use a whole lot. Now while you're there, check this out. This is a new feature on the S20 series, live caption. This happens to actually be a feature uh, that you only until recently got on Pixel phones. This is uh, real-time uh, closed captioning, essentially. So let's see here. Let's go to YouTube and pull up a random video. Uh, something with talking, though. We're going to want something that isn't depressing and that is talking. Okay. We'll go here. I'm going to turn down the volume so you don't hear it. And you can see right off the top, uh, there is a live caption happening. It's taking any of the words that are being spoken in this video, and it's doing this in real time. It's really kind of impressive how good it is. You can tap it. You can drag it around. It's really great for late night watching. Maybe you don't want to wake, wake anybody up in the room, but you still want to see what's going on in that video. You can go ahead and hit your volume rocker and uh, toggle that on, and you're good to go. Also, when you happen to have that on, yeah, let's see here. I don't need to buy the season. When it's on, if I want to get rid of it and deactivate it, I can swipe it all the way down. That dismisses it, and those captions are no longer running. Very cool feature, and I actually use it all the time, but it's meant to be an accessibility feature, and it's something to know about. This episode of Hands On Android is brought to you by LastPass. As you're preparing your remote workforce, it's important to keep security top of mind with aiding employee productivity. Transitioning to a full work from home environment can be complicated. LastPass is here to make the transition easier without decreasing security. LastPass enables IT teams to remain in complete control over which employees are accessing which resources, no matter where they're working, for unified visibility over access and authentication. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Up next, display tweaks. And you can sum it up into three different words, dark, smooth, and on. So let's go to settings and display. And I'll walk you through each of these. First off, at the very, very top, by default, out of the box, it's in light mode, which, I don't know, I'm a sucker for dark mode. What can I say? I realize everybody has a different, different idea of, of what the right way to go is here. But I automatically put it into dark mode because these are OLED displays. That means you get battery performance improvements when you are in dark mode. Those black pixels don't light up, therefore they're not drawing any battery. So you actually see a market improvement when you're running in dark mode all the time. Plus, it just, I mean, take a look at that. It just looks a whole lot cooler. So throw it in dark mode. Smooth, what does that mean? Well, on the Galaxy S20 series, out of the box, it's set to 60 hertz refresh rate. And you can see on the left side here, it's a little kind of jerky on little, uh, little scrolling that happens in the little preview that they show you. Let me show you that again. Uh, it kind of jumps around versus the right-hand side. You see the 120 hertz where things are just a little bit smoother. So out of the box, it's set to 60 hertz. I like to set that to 120 hertz. You just get those smoother animations. It is a little bit of a battery hit, but in my experience with the phone, it really doesn't make that much difference. And if you're setting dark mode, hey, there's a little bit of an offset. So that's pretty good. So that's smooth. And then finally, on. Because for whatever reason, out of the box, you're set at 30 seconds of inactivity to the time when the display screen turns off. And I feel like that's really aggressive. So I always go in there, change that to something like two minutes because it just sucks to have to always unlock my phone and turn it back on and, and light up the display again time and time again. So doing that just saves me a lot of headache over time. Along that train of thought, there's another feature that's very similar to this. It's called Smart Stay. So I'm going to go ahead and search right into Smart Stay here. It's in Advanced Features, 
and motions and gestures. And SmartStay will actually use the front-facing camera to detect when you're looking at the phone and keep the display on as long as it knows your eyes are on the phone. Really cool feature, definitely useful. That way it doesn't turn off when you're like reading a long article, that sort of thing. It always stays on when your attention is focused on the device. Very cool feature. Uh, another customization that I think is really helpful that I do on all Samsung phones is setting the home screen grid because by default things are very large and spaced out. So we'll go into settings, display, and home screen. And you've got up here home screen grid, five by five, five by five. Those are my settings. I think out of the box, you're looking at something like four by five. Things get a little bigger. You only have four icons across the way. I like to fit just a little bit more in there. Otherwise, you know, things just get a little bit bigger and maybe it's better on your eyes. Maybe you need that because uh, you wanna be able to see things a little bit better. I'm able to kind of get that information density down and you can do this on the home screen as well as your app tray. And it's a really handy feature, app screen grid. There you go, it does, makes that same adjustment for you there. And finally, let's talk a little bit about security. Let's go into settings and then down to lock screen. And then we're gonna go into secure lock settings. Now I will have to enter my pin here. You do not get to see what that is. And once we are in, we have a few options here. In particular, I wanna call out a couple of these. Auto factory reset. Essentially, what this allows for is if your pin is attempted incorrectly 15 times, and uh, if that happens, your phone will be wiped automatically. Now, this is a security feature. If your phone ends up in the wrong hands and they're trying to crack your, your pin or your password or your code, this essentially gives them 15 chances before which your phone is wiped entirely. Keep in mind, like, re remember what I said there, your phone is going to delete. So have this active, sure, but also, like, I know I have kids and every once in a while they go to my phone and they start, like, pretending like they know the password or they think they can crack it. Uh, just keep that in mind. It might not be the best scenario for you or it might be incredibly helpful. Apple iPhones have this as a feature so you can use it on Samsung phones. Lock network and security. Essentially, what this does, uh, it keeps Wi-Fi and mobile data on while the phone is locked. So it keeps it connected while it's locked. That way, uh, if you remember earlier on episode four, I did an episode showing off pieces of the Samsung Find My Device app, and uh, that uses this feature to keep tabs on lost devices to make sure it's always connected to the internet so you can always find it after the fact. So that's an important feature to keep on. And then finally, the show lockdown option. Now, if I hit the power button, I get four, or sorry, three, features right now. I get the, uh, the functionality of powering off, restarting, or emergency mode. Uh, showing the lockdown option gives me another option there. And basically what this does, it immediately locks down my phone. It removes any sort of barometric unlock capability. So it requires the pin or password in order to unlock. And if you think you might be compelled to unlock your phone because uh, you know, by simply showing the, the camera on your face to unlock it or using your fingerprint, this eliminates the ability to do that. So it's an extra deep security functionality for ensuring that your phone stays in the right hands and doesn't fall into the wrong hands and unlocked for them. Now, if you know Samsung, then you know that this is really only scratching the surface. Now, I'm happy to see that Samsung has continued to offer its many bells and whistles without completely destroying the experience through all that noise. Sure, there are features that make for a good on-stage demonstration, but there's a lot in there that effectively clean up the day-to-day -day experience for its users. Uh, so I hope you'll check that out, and I hope that's helpful. Send me your tweaks, your favorite tweaks especially, to hands-on-android at twit.tv. Also, be sure to subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash HOA. You can subscribe to both audio and video formats in your favorite podcatcher, as well as even YouTube. All those links can be found on the site. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on Hands on Android.